What's up guys, EDA here and we're going to be doing a review of the England vs Slovakia game. Uh, the Euros 2024 last 16 encounter. We've already had a couple of games yesterday. Germany um, going through, uh, Switzerland also going through, beating Italy. And that set the stage for England to go ahead and play this game against Slovakia. Coming into this game, we all, we all knew, and that's why I'm laughing, we all knew the, the situation that England had been in. They've been playing poorly throughout the tournament, um, no doubt about that. There have been questions about the selections, who should be starting. Um, but ultimately, one man makes that decision, Gareth Southgate. I've had my major doubts about him in the past. I, I don't think he's an amazing manager, if I'm being honest with you. But he has a current crop of great, intelligent players all across the pitch. And I think this is the most glaring example of him not being the man that should be leading this team. Um, yes, England go through and we'll go through that in detail. But if we start off in the beginning of the game, it was very much uh, to and fro. You can see in the momentum there that uh, Slovakia had their fair share. Um, you can even see in the total games, they had the highest expected goals compared to England. England weren't creating anything of substance. They had um, a disallowed goal in the second half. Uh, that was after uh, Slovakia had already taken control in the first half. A very, very slick footballing move. Um, a nice little uh, pass... Uh, into the pocket and a beautiful finish past Pickford and they were 1-0 up and it was a 1-0 that was deserved they had played good football and um, you couldn't knock them for, for what they'd done so far in England they didn't impress they didn't seem to have much to their game um, which is very consistent for what we've seen throughout the tournament again in the first half um, be very much a 50-50 game if I'm being honest with you uh, England seemed to wake up a little bit after that but nothing of note and going into the second half, we were looking for a number of changes to see what would be happening. Um, it didn't start off fast at all. Um, Foden had that disallowed goal, but it was clearly offside. Um, he'd made his run too late. It was a good footballing move from England, one of the few that we've seen this tournament. And yeah, it kind of continued in that vein. Palmer came on. Um, he had a less than desirable impact. Um, and... Yeah, England was still pushing for for victory, but it, it didn't look like they had any intent. It didn't look like they were desperate for it. Um, Southgate was making changes very, very late into the day. Um, he brought on Tony eventually towards the end of the game, but, you know, 90, 80 minutes in, 90 minutes in, England didn't look like they were going to get a winner until Jude Bellingham, uh, after a, a big throw-in, a uh, knock-on from uh, Gehi and Jude Bellingham with an overhead kick that, Surprised me. I won't lie. I thought England were dead and buried. He he pulls out a moment of vict uh, brilliance. It was different than what we had seen from him in the last couple of games because he had been a little bit absent, um, not at the forefront of, of all all good things. But one thing about Jude Bellingham is that he's a match winner. Um, he's he's got that something about him. He's done it at Real Madrid. He's doing it for England now, and it was massive. Um, that took the game to extra time, and England started off very strongly uh they had a corner and as the ball was played back in tony got a knock on and harry kane was able to finish again kane wasn't playing well if we're being honest with ourselves but he provided that big moment when his country needed it and again that's the most important thing getting the victory moving on in the in the knockout competition but this kind of play cannot be sustained if, if england are going to take on switzerland next which i believe they are they're going to have to perform a lot better than they have. Uh, we'll look through the lineups and the ratings. Um, again, the, the one major change for England was mainly um, starting, which was, again, something that we were um, accustomed to from the last game and him coming on at half time. No other changes in the front four. I think Foden needs to come out. There needs to be some change um, there. There was some switching for Saka moving into left back during the game. Again, these things. Um, I think are just consistent with a team not knowing their clear direction. Um, they pulled it out in steps, yes, but they're going to have to turn it up a number of levels going forward. I think for me, um, Maynou Rice did well. Um, Juju got a salute for the, for the goal, if nothing else. I don't think anyone kind of stood out, and I'd like to see Trent come in for Walker, if I'm being honest with you. I think uh, Walker was quite poor in a number of, of areas, and... Yeah, I'd love to see um, a bit of creativity come, see a Trent Saka uh, right side uh, and see how the team perform 
with 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 those two in tow. Um, but yeah, that's that's the major we get from the game again. England not exciting, um, but they pulled it out, and you've got to salute them for that. If nothing else, but going up against a good Switzerland team who have performed, um, Jaka Vargas, um, a number of players who have performed time and time again in this tournament. Uh, England will need to show up. Hope you guys have liked it. Make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again. Peace.